Just when we thought the Blackmagic camera app for your iPhone couldn't get any better, well, they've added some more new interesting features that you should know about. So this is part two, let's go. First up is something known as AB rack focusing points. So first off, you're gonna focus on something in the foreground, set your point. Focus on something else, set your second point. Then when you hit this play button, it will automatically rack focus back and forth. You can even choose the time duration of how slow or how fast it rack focuses. Also, they gave you a third C point should you need to go between three different points. In this first iteration, there are a couple quirks, mainly that you have to tap to focus and then set the A or B point. I would much rather just manually focus and then be able to set the A, B points that way, so that might be something they'll fix later. There's also this one weird icon, which I'm assuming means you can rack focus back and forth continuously until you pause it. Uh, doesn't seem to do anything right now, so it might be enabled in the next firmware update. Lastly, if you do mess with AB points right now, if you try to go back to full autofocus, it's not gonna work right off the bat unless you enable and disable it really quickly, but the best way is just to simply reboot your app and then everything will work as normal. So hopefully they fix this in the next firmware update. Next up, we have audio monitoring. We can do this in two ways. We can either use a Bluetooth headset or an AirPod, or we can also hardwire a headphone to the iPhone and be able to listen to your audio that way. Simply go into your audio menus and your settings, make sure you choose the microphone source first, and then go over and enable your audio output. From there, you can determine if you want to use your Bluetooth headphones or a wired headset. In this iteration, it was a little bit finicky when I was attaching my Rode Wireless Pro through USB and then going into the AirPods. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't for whatever random reason. So hopefully they fix that bug so that it works seamlessly soon. This next one has me excited. So on your iPhone 14 Pro and 15 Pro, it's going to take that 48 megapixel sensor and allow you to do what Apple already lets you do in their camera app, which is zoom in to get a 48 millimeter focal length while still maintaining 4K video. This is definitely something I wanted and I'm glad that we now have the ability to use up to 48 millimeters, even if it is a digital crop. But I kind of hope that in the future, they're gonna give us all the focal lengths in between. So for people that might want a 28, a 35 millimeter, basically just let us zoom and crop in on that one specific sensor. And I think that will make everybody very happy. Next up for people that have made custom LUTs, you now can record your LUT directly to the video. So if you don't want to do any sort of post-processing, you can simply go ahead and just record the exact look. All you have to do is go into your LUT menu and make sure you switch record to clip and you're good to go. Lastly, if you have a Tilta Nucleus Nano M or N system with a wireless follow focusing remote, well, you can pair it to your Blackmagic app and therefore have all the same benefits. So you can pull focus wirelessly, you can set your AB points, you can even hit record wirelessly. This is definitely awesome if your phone is rigged up and you don't necessarily want to be tapping the screen all the time. If you're completely new to filmmaking and you wanna understand all the basic principles you can implement onto your iPhone, I do have a paid course where I will teach you everything you need to know and more in a nice, easy to understand fashion. So check that out if you want to, and otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.